and good morning. And welcome to Trinity, and I invite you to stand up and to greet one another in the name of the Lord. Good morning to you. Good morning, both of you. Good morning, Bert. Do you have a minute, man? Talk to him. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. 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 Let's quiet our hearts for worship today. Good morning. We'll welcome, welcome you this morning and ask you to join in the worship base to believe God enjoyed us in the worship gathering. This service is a direct broadcast from our sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church, Fairwood, Minnesota. Our pastor, the Reverend Michael Lerner, will be conducting the service with our pastor, Reverend Paul Rieger, delivering the sermon entitled, The Cross is Foolish. Our organist will be by Morasco, a special music provided by the Trinity Choir. Our order of worship will be the Office of Matins on page 219 of the Lutheran Service Book. The radio broadcast of Sunday is given in loving memory of Everett Fuchs by his family. We invite you, to, invite you, to, invite you to join us in our opening hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. This is a special hymn printed in our worship folder. Rise. Oh, 
Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Psalm 19, spoken responsively. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. There is no speech. Nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Which comes out like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and like a strong man, runs its course with joy. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson comes to us in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. We begin reading at verse 1. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant, or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this day comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We begin reading at verse 18. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, 
so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom in our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please join us for our next hymn, Cross of Jesus, Cross of Sorrow, number 428 in the Lutheran Service Book. Please rise then for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. We begin reading at verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple. And you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When, therefore, he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. O Lord, have mercy on us. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. We 
have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Please be seated. We invite the children to come forward now for the children's message. Please come forward. Good morning. You guys are taking your time today, huh? Good morning. Have a seat. All right. So, is it uh, is it a very nice thing to call someone stupid? No, it's not very nice. Would you like it if someone called you stupid? No, I wouldn't like it either. But you know, uh, so in our reading that Pastor Nerva read for us, Paul was talking about all of these people who look at us, us Christians, and think we're stupid. You know? That hurts, doesn't it? They look at what we do when we worship and when we get together, and they think that's a waste of time. And uh, it hurts. But to, uh, for us, this isn't a waste of time, right? For us, when we look at the cross, it's, it's very meaningful, right? It's very important to us. What does the cross tell us? What does the cross tell us? Who died on the cross? Go ahead. You know it? Oh, she's being shy. It's Jesus, right? You guys, you guys are really quiet today. So Jesus dies on the cross for us. And, that, and so we put the cross everywhere, right? You can see a cross up there. There's a cross over there. There's a cross on the pulpit. There's crosses in the stained glass. There's a cross hidden up there. I mean, they're everywhere, right? Because the cross, we look at that and we see, we see a God who loves us. We see a God who will do anything to us. It's not stupid to us. It's very important to us. It's very meaningful for us. And so we live our lives telling everybody about this, this thing that they might not think is very important. And we let God work through us and tell people all about Jesus. So let's, let's pray about that, okay? Fold your hands, bow your heads, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus, who went to the cross to save us. Help us, Lord, to share this truth with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have a piece of candy in congregation. We'll continue with our next hymn, Drawn to the Cross. Please join us for our sermon hymn, Drawn to the Cross, number 560 in the Lutheran Service Book.
dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so as you can tell, that screen is not working. The projector bulb burned out. So you'll have to kind of crane your neck over this way and look at that one. And if you can't see over there, just imagine it, right? Imagine these really great pictures that are really nailing the points. So as we reflect on what Paul was telling us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, like I just asked the children, being called stupid, being called an idiot, it's, it's not a really nice thing. Have you ever been put in that situation where someone calls you dumb? I know when I was growing up, I got that a number of times, uh, mostly by my parents, because I was doing dumb things. Uh, but it's actually, it's really interesting, because in our, in our stupidity, we make these mistakes, and it actually leads us to become wiser, right? So it's this learning process that we have that actually helps us grow. But what do we do if we're only ever seen as stupid? That they, they see, people see no growth. They, they see nothing worthwhile. And that's what a lot of people see when they look into the church. They see a lot of people wasting their time. They're wasting their money. They're wasting themselves on something which they see has absolutely no value. Paul says it very well, to those who are dying, the cross is folly, foolishness, moronic. When people look in and they see the cross, they see people with a morbid fascination of some guy's death. But like I shared with the children this morning, to us the cross is very important. It's very meaningful. It is a reminder of the love of God. In fact, it is the power of God, all for us. When people look in from the outside, they see stupidity. But when we look out from the inside, we see a world that is lost. And yet it is in, this thing, in these things that don't make sense that God has worked through us, works in us. This is what God has used so that he might humble the world. Because really, if you stop and you objectively look at everything a lot of what we praise and worship doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In fact, the language is, is odd. The hymn, the, not drawn to the cross, but the pr one before that, cross of Jesus, cross of sorrow, as we were singing this last night, it really hit me that the words that we use are weird. Cross of Jesus, cross of sorrow, where the blood of Christ was shed, perfect man on thee did suffer, perfect God on thee has bled. It's not really a joyous thing to have somebody bleed on you. Blood is not really looked at as like a, you know, the most pleasant thing in the world. Granted, we need it in our bodies to function, but you know, an open wound is not a good thing. And even a cross, right? An instrument of death and torture. That's not a good thing. We reflect on the Romans and how they had this, this killing down to a science to make the person suffer as much as possible. And yet to us, it's a good thing. Because when we look at everything and we, we look at this, and it's, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense what God has done. It makes no sense that God would humble himself, come down and take on our flesh, on our form. It doesn't make sense that this God in the flesh, this Jesus, would suffer for others. It doesn't make sense that Jesus would go through all that pain and suffering just to come back to life, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But yet, when we look at these things, it is our salvation. To those who are being saved, it is truly the power of God, all for us, for all of us. In our world, when you have something valuable, you don't give it away for free. That's just not how we function. Why do that when you can make a profit from it? And you know, this is one of the reasons that Jesus gets so angry in the temple today. When he starts flipping tables, is because they're profiting off of the gifts of God. They're trying to turn that into a business. This is not what God wants. What God wants is 
the gifts to be offered freely because that's what he does. You know, and I, I do have a salary. That's, that's how I make my living here at this church. But can you imagine that if on top of that, I charged you for everything? If Pastor Nerva and I are sitting at those two doors, making sure that we're getting the cover charge of five bucks from each one of you to come into this church. If you want forgiveness and absolution, that'll cost you 250 You want to come to the altar and receive the body and blood of the Lord? That's expensive. That's going to run you 20 bucks. I mean, can you imagine? I would hope that some of you would start flipping tables if we started doing things like that. Because the reality is, is that the gifts of God are free. They are meant to be free. They are meant to be just given away as much as possible. Something so valuable as eternal life is given away free of charge. Because that's what God wants. No down payment, no bills, no deposit. You don't even have to work for it. It's just given to you. Jesus suffered and died on the cross. He rose from the grave and gives this free and wonderful gift to all people, not earned through our toil, but through the toil of Christ. And really, it just doesn't make sense to our world. It doesn't make sense to our sinful ears. What makes sense to us is dumping money into things to solve problems. But what I want you to see is that God loves you so dearly that not only has He given you His most precious Son, but He has also given you the most precious gift of eternal life. And while that doesn't make sense to the world, it is so wonderful to us. It is good news to us. That life. And that life is what we really need to focus on. In our foolishness and folly in the cross, we really need to focus on life. Now, I've shared with a number of you, and some of you might have noticed I wasn't here last week because I was down in Phoenix. It wasn't a vacation, although the sun was out, which, in case you've missed it for a while, the sun is still out there. Don't worry. There's still some heat in that thing, too. Uh, So while I was down there, I was attending this conference, uh, and the focus that I brought with me was to seek out a mission for our church. Something to encourage all of us to really get excited about this foolish cross. Because honestly, I'm a little bit worried that we as a church, myself included, are a bit lazy. That we're not doing what we should be doing. That we simply just have this wonderful gift of salvation, but we don't give it away. We just keep it for ourselves. And so I wanted to find some way to not only excite myself, but to excite all of us to share this gift, because that's what we're called to do, to to share that foolishness, to share that joy. One of the presenters was this gentleman, David Kim, um, who really hit me hard with something. And he said, where is our urgency? People outside are dying. They are at risk of eternal damnation and hell. Where is our urgency to give them the gospel? To give them eternity of salvation with God? Where is our urgency? That really hit me like a hit me like a truck. Because where is our urgency? So let's be honest with one another. By a show of hands, I want you to raise your hand. If you had a chance to share the gospel with someone, someone you knew could use it, but you didn't. And I'm raising my hand right now because I myself haven't done it. Now keep your hands up. Look around. You're not alone. Now you can put your hands down. One more question. Raise your hand if you know someone or even somewhere where you could go and give the gospel that it would have an effect on someone. Raise your hand. There's someone you can go to. There's some place you can go to to share the gospel. Look around. Right? You know, the thing is, is I could could go to the bar after church, sit and have a beer, and talk with people, and share the gospel. I could do that today. And I know that it would have a powerful effect because I know that I've done that before. And I know that God has called all of us to certain places. But as we showed each other, as we were all honest with each other, we have failed. 
And that's the simple and sad truth is that we failed. And that's heartbreaking. I would wager that many of us have failed in those situations to present the gospel to someone because we don't feel adequate to do it. We're, we're nervous, we're anxious, you know, we just feel like, well, I don't want to do this and maybe burn a bridge with that person. We don't think we're good enough. We don't think that we're equipped to preach. But that reminds me of him 826. Hark the voice of Jesus crying. Verse 2. If you cannot speak like angels, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot rouse the wicked with judgment's dread alarms, you can lead the little children to the Savior's waiting arms. There's all these opportunities. I can't preach like Paul. I certainly don't have a voice like an angel, but I can tell people about the love of God shown to us in Jesus. We might not be able to go and, and show people the sin, their sinful ways. We not, might not be able to encourage them to change. But we can share the love of God with kids. We can get them started at a young age knowing who their God is and how much He loves them. I want to also direct you to verse 26 of our reading. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. You're chosen. God chose you. God saw you in the pit of sin and pulled you out. God chose you to be worthy of His Son, Jesus Christ. That nothing that you did could ever make you worthy, but He looked at you and said, this person deserves it. And not only that, He chooses you now to go out and proclaim this message of joy and peace to the world. One thing that that David Kim guy said as well is that God is calling each and every single one of us to a mission and He has already equipped us for what He is calling us to do. You're already prepared. You're already adequate. And so in these feelings of inadequacy, you know, don't beat yourself up. Well, Pastor Rieger said I'm adequate, but I, I just don't feel like it. Those are the times when you go to your God in your prayer and you say, help. God, help me. Many of you probably see Pastor Nerva and I that we pray before we preach. And while I don't know Pastor Nerva's prayer, my prayer is always, God, let me be good enough. Let me bring your word to your people. Very honestly, I, I literally say, God, don't let me suck. I want to be good. Because that's the truth. That's what I want. I want to be adequate in my bringing of the gospel. And I don't feel adequate. But we always have to remember that we are chosen, that we have been singled out by God, each and every single one of us, not only to receive His love, but also to share His love. So then let's think practically. How do we do it? How do we share wisdom? How do we share this true wisdom with the world? How do we make these people accept the folly of the cross? How do we make them accept Jesus? And I hope your, your ears are picking up the wrong things I'm saying. We don't do it. We don't make them change. We don't make them accept. What is our job? To preach the folly of the cross. It is the power of God which changes people's hearts. If you go back to the book of Acts, and I would encourage you in devotions to, to skip your daily devotions and just instead read Acts for the next week. And look at how they function as the church. These apostles, these followers of Jesus, aren't really special people. They're chosen like you and me. They're chosen to serve like you and I are. These are weak people, lost and confused. These are people who are fishers, they're beggars, they're craftsmen, they're mothers and fathers, they're farmers, they're, they're simple folk. They're not people with with these doctorates in theology. They're not these people who have these, these wonderful gifts of money who are able to do amazing things. They're just people like you and I are. 
people you might not consider equipped. You might not consider them to be wise. They might be clever, but you don't really consider them wise. And what do they do? They only proclaim Christ crucified. You look at the wonderful sermons that Peter gives in the book of Acts, and all he says the entire time is, Jesus was crucified, but he is risen, and he is there as Lord, sitting at the right hand of God, ready and there for you. What made them adequate? God did. That's what we celebrate at Pentecost, right? The Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, comes to these people and works through them to save about 3,000 souls. And the struggle that we have now today is that we've lost this urgency that the apostles had. You read through Acts and you see every step of the way they are trying to find a way to tell people about this God who loves, this God who gives. And we have lost that urgency, but we can get it back very easily. Lent is the perfect time for it, too. You've got less than half a month to start talking to people about the risen Lord. Use this time to really reflect on this foolish cross and think, what can I do? You might not think that you're good enough, but you can pray to God to help you understand how he works through you. You need to also understand that the mission field is not Papua New Guinea, it's not Africa, it's not China, not for us. Our mission field is Faribault. For some of us, it's Morristown. For some of us, Northfield. It's where God has placed us because we're not called to be foreign missionaries. If we were called to be foreign missionaries, we'd be doing that. But you are called right here, right now, in this town, in this community, to start sharing the love of God. That's your mission. And not only that, your own family is your mission. How are you as mom and dad raising your kids? How are you as grandparents making sure that your family knows about the gifts of God? And you kids out there, how are you sharing the love of God with your family? This is your mission field right here. And Lent is such a perfect time for us to reflect on this because what do we celebrate on Easter? Our risen Lord. The love of God given to the world. And we can then go from Easter to share the love of God with everyone. But dear friends, be fools. Preach the folly of the cross. Share this message with a world that's dying, that needs to know about this. And when you are afraid to do it, when you struggle to do it, pray to God. Simplest prayer out there. Dear God, help. Amen. Four words. Your Father in heaven who loves you knows what you need. Be a fool. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to continue on in our worship with our next hymn, number 645, Built on the Rock.
an offering for the Lord will now be received. I invite the congregation to please rise. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom. And teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen the lord be with you together let us pray O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Gospel, which is the very message of the cross itself and of salvation. Embolden us by the power of your Holy Spirit to declare you boldly to a world that finds the cross to be a stumbling block, and to a world that does not know the cross or the gospel of salvation by faith alone in you. Help us then that we would go forth in your name and to preach your word unto all nations in fulfilling the great commission. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh Lord Jesus, you are the great physician and healed all who came to you here when you were on earth. You are the God of all mercies, the Lord of all comfort, our only help in time of need. Look with favor upon your servants who are in need of strength, comfort, and healing. Be with Marian Applegren, Mandy Bloom, Merlin Borchard, Wilmer Burmeister, Lord Carlson, Laurel Inquist, Austin Ellerbush, Leanne Fuchs, Roberta Heinenen, Linda Hesse, Kathy Kaler, John Maluski, Nea Moore, Arlene Rolfe, Diane Schultz, Jim Velsky, Betty Wieben, and Earl Young. O Almighty Lord, assure these people of your mercy. Deliver them from the temptations of the evil one. Grant them patience and comfort in their illnesses. And by your good pleasure, restore them to health and give them grace to receive this tribulation with courage and hope until you remove their cross in due time. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us this country as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance and terrorism in every course of evil action. And grant that we who have come from many nations with many different languages become a united people. Support us in defending our liberties and be with our vanguards of freedom and the armed forces that you would grant them safety. And give to those of whom we have entrusted the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there may be justice and peace in our land. We pray then for those who are pregnant and the unborn, that life would be honored in our country. We pray for our institutions of higher learning, that they, they would learn truthful things and be taught your word. Especially we pray for FOS, the staff, the students, and their families. We ask that you would make us worthy citizens of this country, and that you would be with us. And when times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful. In troubled times, not let our trust in you fail. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word goes forth from you and never returns to your void. We pray as the cross of Christ is given unto all the world, we pray for our missionaries. Especially we pray for Pastor Fung and Kalia and their family who serve in Thailand that you would bless this ministry and all who hear of you and the good news of salvation would come to believe in you in the way, the truth, and life and be baptized in your name most holy. And bless this missionary ministry, we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for our congregation. And for this week, we pray for our members of the Trinity family that you would render to each and every soul what they need, grant them a special measure of your Holy Spirit, strengthen their faith, and help them to study your divine word. In this day, O oh Lord, we pray for Christopher Wachowski, Colt, Cody, and Chance, 
Dennis Wachowski, Karen Wachowski, Megan Wachowski, Monica Waskowski, and Nathan Jones, and Elijah Jones. Bless these families, we pray. And also, Lord, be with our new office addition to the planning, the fundraising, the building. That again, this building, this edifice, would be raised for the furtherance of your kingdom and for the glory of your divine name. And Lord, grant us your protection in our congregation and keep us safe, we pray. And bless us, we pray, this and all things in Jesus' name. Lord, in your mercy. For, O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run to any kind of danger, but in all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we come to the close of the number of the service, we pray it has been a blessing to you and strengthen your faith in Christ. This was a direct, direct broadcast from the sanctuary of Trinity Lutheran Church in Farewell, Minnesota. Radio broadcast this Sunday morning was given in loving memory of Everett Fuchs by his family. Our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Michael Norva, conducted the service with Pastor Paul Rieger delivering the sermon entitled, The Cross is Foolish. Organist was Barb Morosco with special music provided by the Trinity Choir. If you'd like a copy of Pastor Rieger's sermon, please write to us at Trinity Radio Club, 530 Northwest 4th Street, Faro, Minnesota, 550 Please be sure to include your name, return address, and today's date. <clears throat> You can also visit us on the web at www.trinityradioandvideo.org where you can view past services, order copies of past services, and see a calendar of events at Trinity Lutheran Church. We invite you to join us this Wednesday evening at 5.30 p.m. on KDHL for a special midweek Lenten service broadcast. Returning now to the downtown studios of KDHL. <laughs>